And he came running in, trembling, fell down and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And Paul said, and make sure if you're going to quote scripture, you quote it right. And you quote the whole thing. Acts 22, or uh, Acts 22, or Acts 16. And I don't remember the verse. 19, I'm not sure. Anyway, it says, If thou shalt believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, thou shalt, not you already are, but thou shalt be saved and thy house. Now, do I believe that if I believe that not only am I saved, but my whole family is automatically saved? Paul is talking to a man who doesn't know one thing about the Lord. This is not a, a altar call at the end of a Bible study. Acts 2.38 was the altar call at the end of a Bible study. End of a message. But this is simply a sermon introduction that if you'll put your trust in Jesus Christ, he'll save you and your whole family. Amen. So did it say, so the guy knelt down and accepted the Lord as his personal Savior? No, that's not in the Bible either. There's not one place in the Bible where someone was ever asked to accept the Lord as their personal Savior or where anyone told someone you need to accept the Lord as your personal Savior. That's not in the Bible. It didn't come from the Bible. Now, I know there are times when people use that phraseology and lead people to genuine repentance. But if you're going to lead them to genuine repentance, why not talk to them about repentance? Because there's a lot of people that use that phraseology that are not led to genuine repentance. And if you haven't repented, you haven't turned from your sin and turned to God. Why don't we simply say what the Bible says? Say it like the Bible says. Believe it like the Bible says. Amen. Amen. And then it says, so he took them to his house and washed their stripes. And what happened? Who has that? Acts 16. What, what's it say about he washed their stripes and then... But, but they, the, before then it says that about him speaking the word to them. They spake unto him the word of the Lord. Well, why do they need to speak unto him the word of the Lord? Haven't they already told him how to be saved? Why didn't they just lead him to Christ? This is a guy who doesn't know anything about the Lord. They speak to him the word of the Lord, and something they spoke to him had to do with baptism because he and his whole family in the middle of the night went out and got baptized. I remember I was talking to a preacher about baptism when I was very young in the Lord. And this preacher said, you don't believe it. Baptism has anything to do with salvation, do you? And I said, well, of course. According to the scripture. He said, no, I don't want to talk scripture with you about it. I said, well, the Bible says, he said, no, I refuse to talk scripture with you about it. He said, I, I, there was a guy through here years, uh, some time back. I was stationed at Iwakuni, Japan. That's where I baptized. First person I ever baptized in Jesus' name. He's a preacher now. The hand of God's on his life. But this, this preacher made a statement. He said, there was a guy like you some time back. He took people out in the middle of the night and baptized them in the river in Jesus' name. Now, what good would that do anybody? Well, he ought to ask the Apostle Paul, because that's what the Apostle Paul did also. Not one time in the Bible did they say, we're going to have a baptism service the third Sunday, three months from now. Or you've got to go through a bunch of catechism classes, and then we'll let you be baptized. Amen. Amen. Paul said, he said, Ananias was sent by the Lord to me. This is back in Acts 22, 16. He said, he was sent by Ananias to me. And when he came in, he said, Saul, why tarriest thou? That means, what are you waiting on? Arise. That means, get up. 
and be baptized and wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord. Now, wait a minute. When he got knocked down in the middle of the road, wait, stop and think a minute. Why did Ananias not say, Arise, Saul, you need to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ? He already believed. That's right. The Lord spoke to him in an audible voice, said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. If he didn't believe after that, friend, he ain't never going to believe. <laughs> but I want you to know, though he clearly believed, and Ananias never talked to him about faith or belief, his sins were not washed away. Now, you can't question that. His sins were not washed away. And there's no question that Ananias did not talk to him about believing. He did not talk to him about trusting in the Lord. He did not talk to him about faith. Amen. Because he already believed. He did not lead him to repentance because the man had already been praying and fasting for three days. The Lord told him, I want you to go talk to him because he's praying. The Lord, uh, the Lord told Ananias that. So Ananias did not come in and talk to Saul about Repentance, because he had already repented. He didn't talk to him about faith or believing, because he already believed. Amen. But though he believed and though he had repented, his sins were not washed away. Yes. And then and I told him to do one thing to get those sins washed away. Get up, get baptized, calling on the name of Jesus, and get your sins washed away. Amen. That's the same thing Peter said on the day of Pentecost. Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. In the name of Jesus Christ what for, for remission of sins. I will remind you that in, in Luke 24, 47 Jesus said just before he ascended, he said repentance and remission of sins will be preached in my name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. This was Jerusalem. This was the beginning. It was the next event after Jesus spoke those words. Amen. It was the birthday of the church. And it was in Jerusalem. Now, I don't believe Jesus was a false prophet. I believe Jesus told the truth. And I can look and show you exactly when what he said would happen, happened. And I believe that what happened there, which is exactly what Jesus said was going to happen. Jesus said, that's the message that will be preached first in Jerusalem. And then that's the one I want preached all over the world. Amen. I would want to make sure that I was preaching the same message they preached there in Jerusalem. Because that's the one Jesus said was to be preached in all the world. Amen. And in Galatians chapter 1, verse 6 through 9... Paul said, if any man or an angel from heaven preaches any other gospel than the one we preach to you, let him be a curse. Now, friend, that's pretty strong. It doesn't say let him be cursed. It says let him be accursed. Read in the Bible what an accursed thing is. How many of you remember about when Achan took the accursed thing, took it home? brought about the destruction of him and his whole family? Yes. Do you know the Bible is so strong about this that in the New Testament, John said, maybe it was James or Peter, I'm not sure. Just look as you can look the verse up for me real quick. He said, if any man comes bringing any other gospel to you than the one we preach to you, don't feed him. Do not bring him in your house. Do not help him. Or you have become a partaker in his evil deeds. Wait a minute. He's preaching a gospel message. John said, if it's not the one we preach, he's doing evil. These are not things that I wrote or that are my personal opinion. This is God's personal opinion. It's in his word. So the first thing is the purpose. The second thing is the method. Second John 11, if anyone come, not bringing this gospel, neither bring him into your house, and neither bid him God speed, for if you bid him God speed, that means don't even say God bless you in your labor. He says if you do, 
you become a partaker of his evil deeds. Amen. 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 The method. Of course, many of you are already aware that the word baptize itself means to submerge or plunge all the way under. There is no record in history of anybody doing anything called that they call baptism by sprinkling up until 1200 some A.D. And that was started by the Roman Catholic Church because they had come up with a doctrine that babies had to be baptized. You know, for the first 1200 years of the uh, uh, of the you know, for up until 1250 some A.D., the Catholic Church did not baptize babies and did not teach that babies need to be baptized. Many of the Protestant groups who came out of the Catholic Church also continued to teach infant baptism. Well, when they started baptizing babies, they called it baptizing. Mamas didn't want to see their little baby plunged all the way under the water. And that little kid come up with screaming and squalling. So they came up with this method of dry cleaning. They said, we'll just sprinkle some water on them or we'll take a rose and dip it in water and flick it over them. The word baptize itself means to submerge, to plunge all the way under. To dip into until it's completely covered over. Amen. Amen. It's also likened unto burial. And you don't bury, bury something by just laying it on top of the ground and sprinkle a few little flecks of dirt over it. Amen. I read about a little boy that was witnessing to this lady that said about baptism by immersion, and she she said, "Well, this, you know, uh, this is what I believe in. This is, you know, it's good enough for me." And so her dog or cat, he did yard work for her, and her dog or cat died. And she asked him if he'd bury it. He said, sure. So he went out on the front lawn and went and got a little hand, laid it on the front lawn and went and got a few handfuls of, of dirt and just sprinkled a few over and came back and he said, I, I, I buried it for you, ma'am. She said, that is not going to work. What are you, what are you doing? Then? I asked you to bury that. He said, well, the Bible says baptism is burial and if I figure if that's good enough for us, for our souls, that's certainly good enough for your capital, whichever it was. If we can be buried that way, why can't it be buried that way? Amen? Amen. It's always in the Bible by immersion. Jesus went down into the water and came up out of the water. Philip with the Ethiopian eunuch. They went down into the water and they came up out of the water. When the Ethiopian eunuch came up out of the water. The only way you can come up out of the water is if you went down into the water. Amen. 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 So it's by immersion. And in the Bible it was always in Jesus' name. Now the importance of that name... We have talked about before. And the reason I, I went through all this, now, I, again, I can give you many, many, many scriptures about the, about the importance of Jesus' name, baptism. I already mentioned to you Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Acts 4, 12. Uh, Romans 6, 1 through 3. Colossians.